It is Stars Without Number, White Wolf Pyre, Session 18. Time for the recap. We got back on the ship. Corvold had the glazerite uh, that he retrieved after hitting the creature with his uh, gladius a couple times. And uh, the ship's engine was out, so we were trying to see if we could repair it another um, so we could leave. And then a, another ship came in. Uh, big ship. <laughs> big ship. And we saw four uh, armored people in armored mech suits, or, or armored back suits, uh, rather, entering the, uh, uh, the site that we left, the space station. On this asteroid, we got into contact with them and ended up just stalling for time. Um, yeah, and fed them some gibberish about powering up the engines to boost the structural integrity or something. And I'd rigged up some explosives in the cargo bay to feed up to their tractor beam, which didn't go as planned, but last minute course correction with the uh, telekinesis seems to have somewhat got the job done. And Corvold spent 30 minutes uh, trying to fix, <laughs> fix the spike drive so he could get out. After spending an unknown amount of time cutting tracking discs off the outside of the ship, if I, or no, that was after. That was after. That was after yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we learned, and Corvold shared this, I believe. We learned that the sh on the ship was uh, Niles. He was sending uh, dirty DMs to Corvold asking to uh, surrender the Glazerite um, in exchange for you know not wanting to cause any trouble. We fixed the spike drive jumped into jumped into metadimensional space uh we got sprayed with a bunch of tracking trackers um and then we spent the next however corvald rather spent the next however long trying to take them off <laughs> um, it was pretty quick work with the gladius however uh every time corvald learned that uh he had a a uh some chance something out of six chance at least two out of six chance <laughs> to uh experience a time skip uh with any contact of the gladius uh mm -hmm. so uh he finished knocking all of the trackers off the ship and then, except for the last one he hit it and then it reset everything um so after that point he kind of became wise to what was going on because it that was probably like the second or third time that happened. And uh, then he used his meta tool to take the rest off and it took far longer. We ran into um, a colony. They were coming out of like an anthill, like a human sized anthill. I was flying around in a chair um, <laughs> and it- <laughs> It was an explosive barrel, but uh, I well, guess you barrel. could call it a chair. He was <laughs> sitting in it. It was sitting on it like a chair. It was riding on an explosive barrel. Uh, mm -hmm. They were convinced that I was that we were sent by their their god, Anne May, or somebody who looked who, when they described it looked like Anne May, mm -hmm. or sounded mm -hmm. a lot like Anne May. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Anne May was not there because um, uh, something uh, she was indisposed at the time. She was being a god. Yeah, in the first meeting with them. Don't forget Splat. Splat, yeah. We uh this creature, um, this creature came up and started uh eating our it was hungry and it was like starting to nibble on parts of the ship. Um so Corvald decided to become a uh, monster tamer and uh collect scrap metal from mm -hmm. that we had laying around from wreckage and debris and just start feeding it and training it. It's a giant pear-shaped thing. I was imagining like purple fur, like <laughs> like some sort of cartoonish like thing out of a children's show. Okay, good. Like a grimace almost. And it, it did not hang, it was not around at night. It only came out during the day. And yeah. the people uh, who you met complained that um, whatever metal they had, like their door that led into the top of the, the mound was chewed on and that they think it was this creature and you also stepped into its scat stepped in its scat at one point and found pieces of plastic hmm. that it obviously didn't digest yeah you all went up there and um talked to 
a woman who said that, um, well, I'd said, of course, all the important people are going to stay behind. And that's why they went out and uh, met this group. And then she said that Gort, their leader, was out. And then I'd said, uh, that's that's not right, because why is the leader out doing actually doing something? <laughs> and uh, our leader stays on the ship. Yeah, yeah. I'm OK. Was, that was the excuse uh, why that was the excuse why Anne May wasn't with us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you came back at night because Paul is supposed to perform. They're all around a circle because they've got these lights that are in uh, stuck in the ground like torches. There's like 20 or 30 of them. And they unveil what they call the one. And it's an uh, obsidian statue that looks very familiar. You'd seen it in a particular space station at one point mm. with bodies writhing around in it and standing like clearly standing above all of them is what looks like Anne May. Her form is like standing there. And yeah. that's where we stopped. Yeah. And they say, behold the one. And all of them just like begin to bow. I cast fireball when they do that as I'm standing <laughs> above them. And it's a... Oh shit. That thing's real? Pinch me, Corvald. I'm having nightmares again. <laughs> Uh, he teleports behind you and pinches you. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> I am the darkness and the light. Fear me. <laughs> I thought that was uh, a dream or a simulation. There are no dreams. There is only me, the one. <laughs> oh, shoot! <laughs> Corval will like, lean over to eye. Do we have do we have to terminate her? Are we in a simulation? No. Is that no. the key to getting out? I don't know. I Everybody give me a I... mental save. Oh dear. Well, oh, I have a mental save. It's fast nice knowing you guys. Oh, that's fast. <sighs> okay. That's my best save, too. Yeah, that's a fail. <laughs> How'd you do? How'd you guys do? So I'd failed. Corvald failed. Okay. A 16 pass. Okay. So Anne May, you're not affected. So Paul uh, is setting up his crappy speakers and his microphone is feeding back and he's like looking around and seeing them bow and he's like, oh, it's kind of awkward. He's like, oh, I guess. And he, he, he starts to play the music and then it's like this weird like feedback distorted like and he says don't let them get to the statue stop them and he looks at the microphone like that came out of my mouth and everybody remember. stands up and looks and sees looks at the three of you uh corvald and i just like something is in your head like causing you uh like a massive headache and everybody can roll this Oh, we're at a Jimi Hendrix concert. D8, because eight is going to eight. One. Oh, that's appropriate. Uh, I, is, I is doomed to die tonight. <laughs> I'll uh, do my best to make sure it happens. <laughs> Corvold also got a one. <laughs> it, is oh not, it is not our night. This is a great start. Well, Anne May's ready for her solo missions, I guess. And May, you're up. You hear this. Uh, you see Paul. He looks at the microphone like, did I just say that? What the? <laughs> and it's feeding back and he runs over to his little crappy setup and he's trying to, I shouldn't say crappy. It's, you know, what he's got to use. It's and what the drummer had in the back of his. I don't want to disrespect the, the artiste. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the people who are being told to get us are who? Uh, this whole group, this whole crowd, the 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 the, the uh, whoever these guys are in their their blue suits and their orange boots and helmets and, uh -huh. and they all stand up and look like we have a problem. This definitely could have gone better. Uh, what's the room look like that we're inside of? You are on top of a hill at night. On top of a hill at night. Okay. And it's just me with my 
equipment, correct? Um, yeah, I would, I'm, I'm assuming you did not show up in your mech. Uh, no, I did not expect okay. I would need it. Okay, um, well, then how far away are they? So there's probably two or three on either side of you, you know, just a couple meters away. They're like right next to you. Ah, lovely. Um, yes, I'm going to start by turning to the run one to my right and uh, start making corpses out of them. Okay. That's all I do is kill people. I can't love anymore. I just murder. <laughs> uh, that's a 19 to hit for uh, 14 points of damage. Uh, you turn that. How did you? What are you using to attack? Oh, just the um, pacify the um, pacifizer one thousand mag rifle. That guy. It's almost like he explodes. He turns into paste, covering the guy right behind him. And like his suit is now covered with blood. And he's like, Ugh. "I'm a lot faster than all of you, <laughs> and I'm going to stop backpedaling." <laughs> and that's uh, the end of my peaceful turn. So, okay, so about a half dozen of them just begin to back away from you. Like, the rest of them kind of look and panic, and they run, and they grab onto uh, Corvald. They seem to kind of avoid Ide, and they all grab a Corvald, uh, grabbing onto him, holding him down. Oh. Um, <laughs> in the sky, you see what was you know it's like just darkness and then out of like nowhere you see these lights and it looks very similar to the ship that you saw the uh cruiser trujillo just kind of appears in the night sky like the ship that we saw uh that we ran away from mm -hmm. okay corval denied well there's yeah. only one real course of action he's gonna teleport the fuck out of there yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay He's going to uh, use his movement to like. I imagine like they're all grabbing onto him. Um, how like how big is this throng? Is it just like a couple people? Is it like twenty people all trying to get 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 a piece? Uh, there's two guys physically on you, and there's like three or four behind them, like trying to get to you. Um, so Corvald's going to teleport behind the out of their their um range and like behind the four people that are trying to get to him and he's going to attack them with his gladius okay uh you have a negative 40 year attack oh just like that's a that's a yeah from the from the, the piercing noise oh my from the fail save well hmm well, if that's the case, well, I guess I'll try it. Um, sure, why not? Yeah, that ain't gonna roll. That was a, I rolled a three, so a negative one. <laughs> okay, and you're trying to hit one of them with the, with the gladius? Yeah. Yeah, the kind of the tele, you kind of teleport and you're kind of thrown off exactly where you wanted to go. And you feel like that hue, that that noise and distortion in your head, and you just kind of you just swing and just keep somebody away from you. They definitely back away, even if you even with you missing with a negative one. They're just like, it seems like they want no part of that sword. If that's the case, uh, missing terribly uh, and having a, a negative penalty, uh, what Corwell's going to do is the remainder of his movement. You get ten, we get ten meters. Um, how many meters do you think he would have teleported to get uh, out of there? What's the max you can teleport? He has, uh, through proficient apportation, he can basically move as a movement. He can teleport as part of his movement, which is 10 meters. Um, so that's how he'd be using it in this. this yeah, piece. it would have been all the 10 meters to get behind them. Okay. He's not going to do anything. So okay. that's his Hide, you see them go after Corvald, and he just teleports away. Um, are we compelled to go after the statue? Is that what was going on with the failed save? No, the failed save is just you're negative. You're just, it's like this horrible uh, head migraine, oppressive noise in your head. Okay, and Corvald went back toward Anme or in toward the statue? He, uh, he, 
Oh, that's a good question. I don't know which direction he went. <laughs> Where, whether the people teleporting behind the people puts him closer to anime or further away. I pictured you went like on the other side of the group. So you're like behind that group. Yeah, so but is that, is, is that towards the is that towards the statue then? So there the circle around the statue. So instead of being on like this oh. side of the statue, you're on the other side. Oh, okay. If I can, he's gonna take off bolting toward Anne May then, since she's presumably closer, friendly. <laughs> okay. And uh, as I run, I'm kind of gonna try and fire a shot out of my rifle over my shoulder, basically. All right. And that's a minus four penalty, you said. Yep. All right, that's gonna be a fourteen to hit. Yeah, that's a hit. Okay. And the damage, ten damage. So you turn and you run and you shoot like over your shoulder and hit one of these guys. And he again turns like into paste. He's like, <laughs> like explodes and covers a couple of the other guys behind him. They're covered. Leave us alone. <laughs> and May, you're up. Uh, she is quite annoyed that she has to go killing people again. So um, how many of them are still acting aggressively to any degree? Well, um, let's see, you've killed two and there's probably over 20 more. Okay, are any of them coming at us still? Or are they just kind of backing away? Some are backing away from you and they're looking around like, where did Corvald go? <laughs> yeah, ones who are looking around for Corvald, I'm just gonna end one of their faces if okay. I can. Yep. Okay, by another shot, that is a 15 plus five to hit, so. Yeah. 30, 20. That is four. Uh, 12 points of damage. So uh, you end one of their faces as their head explodes. And then their body like shrivels up in a nut and they just drop to the ground. There's just left is their shriveled up off. suit and uh, boots and gloves. If you don't back up now, I'll come back with my mech suit and stomp on each and every one of you. <laughs> I'm going to keep backing up another 10 meters. So Paul is uh, got the microphone and he's like confused at what's going on. And he's like, he starts to sing. And when he starts to sing, he says, get the glass right. And he's like, what? And then you see like half of them turn and look and they look in the direction of where the ship is and they start running. Our ship? Yes. Oh, fuck those guys. <laughs> and then Paul goes over to the to the thing and he's messing with the knobs. He's like, what the hell is going on? Like, it's not the words. So a couple more of those guys, Corvault, like surround you and they're like backing off. Like they're trying, they're, they haven't jumped on you, but they're kind of like making a circle around you like to prevent you from going anywhere. And you can see behind them in the middle the tractor beam comes down and grabs the statue and it starts to, you can see it start to move. It's being lifted up. Corvald will turn, like yell to them. They're taking your, they're taking your, your they're taking the chosen one or the one. <laughs> As if this trick hasn't worked. And it's the oldest trick in the book hasn't worked on. Oh my god, what's that behind you? <laughs> give, give me a talk roll. Look, a convenient distraction. Does he have a minus four on this? Uh, go ahead and give me, you guys, both of you guys give me mental saves again. I rolled the same thing. <laughs> I actually passed this time. <laughs> okay, you, yeah, you have managed to like put that noise and everything out of your head. I've spent more time with Carlton than Corval has. I'm used yeah, to you're right. Yeah. Out. yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, so, he has natural immunity. <laughs> the, the minus the minus four um, applies. Because yeah, Corval didn't make it. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the talk roll would be would be a minus four. Okay. So yeah, that's a three. <laughs> One of them just kind of looks behind him at the thing lifting up in the air. And, and kind of smiles. Let's see, that's their actions. 
Corvald or Ide? Hate it. <laughs> yeah, gonna teleport back towards Chip um, and just begin running. <laughs> okay. Uh, not before taking a swing at, though, at one of the uh, people in front of me. Okay. <laughs> I can do that. Unless we get double movement, kind of like if you D and D. I mean, you could take a swing and teleport and start running. That's fine. I mean, nice. This is a this is <laughs> it's a zero. <laughs> Total. Uh, so again, you swing and they just like back away, like, and then you just vanish, and then you're running down the hill. I'd. Are any of these folks around Paul, or are they pretty much just ignoring him? They seem to be ignoring Paul. Is he still over near the? Um, yeah, he's like messing with the metal that I carried him up here on. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Wherever you laid that down, yeah. I had all of his equipment and him on it. Yeah, yeah. He's um, like over there messing with it. I'm gonna like run over and grab the. the uh, I think the manager came with us too, didn't he? Yeah, the, the tour manager, yep. Yeah, I'm going to grab the tour manager and start leading him toward the sheet metal and yell at uh, Anne May to get her ass moving and get over here. I've already moved 20 meters closer to the ship than anyone yeah. else. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, as soon as I can get them on the ship then, or on the, uh, the sheet metal, I'm going to try to levitate it with all of us and kick some of Paul's gear off if we have to to meet the weight capacity, which I think is like 800 pounds, so we probably don't. But I'm going to take off jetting toward uh, Anme as quick as I can, and I can chuck that thing like 30 meters in a turn. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the tour manager is like trying to assess the crowd response at this <laughs> point. <laughs> like, it's, it's not a good show. They're not buying more tickets. Let's go. <laughs> Paul's like, hold on, I'm just, I'm still in my, trying to figure out this, trying to get this first, uh, <laughs> this first song. Oh, what the, okay, all right. This place hasn't been looked at by the fire safety inspector. They're going to shut you down if you're not careful. <laughs> I swear those, those aren't the words to uh, Diane. Diane, you don't have to put on that grayish green dress tonight. That's a song, right? Diane. You grab them and start moving. Uh, Anne May. Yes. Uh, how far is the ship from us? It's all the way down the hill. It's going to take you a little, I mean, a little bit to get there, but are you running in that direction? Well, about how many meters are we talking the ships from us? Uh, 500. 500. Oh, yeah. And there's uh, 17 people left, correct? 17. <laughs> <laughs> uh how many are still heading towards the ship uh, about half the group so i'd say about 12 of them took off and started running oh okay well um i'm just gonna move 10 meters and then shoot one of the ones that's running i mean picky i have, pick a off one. <laughs> I have 300 meter standard range with this thing i can take my time <laughs> i have to go a very long run <laughs> Uh, that's uh, 13 to hit. Yeah. Okay, for uh, 15 points of damage. Yeah, you fire and hit one, and he splats against the covers, like the foliage and the tree, and he's just dead. It will literally take you longer to get down there than it will take me to kill each and every one of you on the way. <laughs> Don't even bother. <laughs> Where is your god now? It's right here. I am your god. Look <laughs> I am the 1.5. <laughs> I am the extended edition. <laughs> All right, so they are running. They see they see the um yeah, they they see that Paul and the tour manager and Ide are like flying away. <laughs> Uh, they all pull, reach in and grab those guns that they had, and you just hear a noise like da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. it makes a bunch of noise, but there's actually you don't that's all you hear. There's like no like lasers or anything. Do they say 
acme on the side of them. <laughs> and meanwhile, the statue, the uh, obelisk thing, the obelisk, the uh, obsidian thing is 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 getting further and further uh, off the ground. It's about to be Niles's problem. <laughs> Corvald, are you running still? Teleporting. Once you teleport range, it should be pretty far at this point. Oh, that's true. Uh... Depends on how many points he has in teleportation. I know, but by himself, he might could make it all the way to the ship. Uh, give me a mental save. I'm trying not to think about too much Corval. <laughs> I got even worse that time. <laughs> <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> My teleportation is a plus one. But I got to look at the, the guide. Uh, let's see. Ide, are you still flying back towards the ship? Yeah, I'll take us another 30 meters, and if we catch up or pass Anime, I'm going to try to yell at her to jump on. Okay, no, give me a 100 meters. 100 give me a notice roll. Notice roll. 10. You see, you can see the these guys running down the hill in the, the two moons lights. And but you also pick out something else. You see two people walking up towards the hill. One is wearing a robe that looks a lot like uh, Corvalt's white robe. I mean, it's like almost the same. Another looks like a woman, maybe in like in some kind of leopard or lion bikini or something, walking next to him. It's eyed. You boys have had it now. <laughs> So they are away from the ship. Um, Corvald, you can give me a notice roll. So I do see that. Uh, I don't know if Corvald sees it. So it's a negative two with that four penalty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're teleporting your ass away. You're not like you're not worried about this. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Todd, Corvald can teleport 100 meters. Um, th thanks for the reminding me of that. Uh, so <laughs> that I can just use it as a move action. So. If it's 100 meters of the ship, he's going to teleport there as his action. Oh, 500 meters. So I guess he'll go 100 meters closer. Uh, I would see this as Paul is like messing with the, the thing and he's like, I don't, I mean, like, I didn't even get through the first song. And then he's like messing with it and he grabs the microphone. He kind of, he's looking at it. And then he said, and then he starts to speak. He's like, and Corvald, you hear booming over the, uh, uh, into this valley is like you hear the 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 high pitch noise, the feedback of the microphone is, and it doesn't sound like Paul and Paul. You see, and you hear a voice say, "Corvald, all we need is the class, all right?" And Paul looks at the microphone like, "What the hell?" And he starts tapping it, and me. Okay, uh, and I have Ide Pop next to me on a floating disc of metal. <laughs> yep, and I do spot two other people on the hill, and Paul has just said something about Glazerite, and he looks very confused. Paul, do us a favor. Don't bother singing right now, and I'm going to sit on the side of it and uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you think? Uh, I'd see anything interesting? Uh, somebody dressed like Corvald's down the hill, but it doesn't look like Corvald. How far away is that person down the hill? Uh, how how far away are they, Peter? Probably uh, twenty meters. Oh. Shoot them! There will yeah. be no imposters. <laughs> Not of me. Great, an imposter, Corval. Now I have to deal with this bullshit too. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to do my best impression of a uh, door gunner in Vietnam killing Vietnamese civilians <laughs> <laughs> by not leading the woman as much. I'm going to shoot at him and. Uh, 21 to hit. Who are you shooting at? Uh, the guy who's just like Corvald. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Not uh, yeah, Corvald, that's a hit. Like... Yeah, good. Um, that's 14 <laughs> plus 2 plus 1 plus 2, so uh, 19 points of damage. Um. <laughs> 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 so as uh, these, you you pull up your scope. I'm assuming it has a scope. Uh, well, it doesn't really need that. Twenty meters away. Center mass shot, 
as the as, and it looks like it's direct on, and all you see in your field of view is a is a is an eruption of fire. And the guy kind of next the next minute he's getting up and his uh, his bathrobe looks pristine, <laughs> and he's like grabbing his chest like like what the hell. And a woman steps in front of him in her uh, leopard skin bikini and looks at you. And it looks like Rose, but she looks like she's like 20 years old. And she looks pissed. (laughs) (laughs) Corvald's not going to be happy with you, Anne. (laughs) What are you talking about? Corvald just yelled about an imposter. No, I said someone was dressed like Corval, not an imposter. <laughs> What's going on here, Eyed? It's probably the person he got the robe from. Oh, God. What's with oh, you? don't shoot him. He's the good one. <laughs> Corval, make up your mind. <laughs> Let me go talk to them. Paul, turn that microphone off. <laughs> I shut it off. I've already shut it off and still I, I don't know. It's, Unplug it. Throw it up. Throw it out. It's battery powered. <laughs> throw the speaker. <laughs> it's a sure microphone. You want him to throw that thing away? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so those guys are running down the hill. And the ship is still, you can hear the tractor beam as it's pulling up the that um, city and statue of Anne May. Corvald and I'd. I'm going to maneuver us down to where the young Rose and whoever's with her is at. Okay. And uh, you see her. She's like, what's the meaning of this? What are you trying to do? She's panicked. It's, it's the people turned on us. The statues screaming. It's not a good situation. What? What are you talking about? Who are, wait, have we met before? I think I would remember you. He looks looks a little familiar, but mostly just the robe. Oh, really? Charlie, are you okay? And he's like clutching his chest. He had there's no blood or anything. He's just he's like, oh Charlie, that's who Corvald said he got the robe from. Wait, wait. You're not, uh, well, I'm here to film the Lionist of Lusty Lagoon. I mean, you're not here for that. No, I don't think so. Is there a paycheck? Um, I could use a vacation. If you can pay me enough for a vacation, that would be, I'm in. What is going on? And she kind of looks up. And she sees the ship. She's like, that's not. Oh. Oh, now I know it's now this is making sense. We maybe we have met. Um, you need to stop that. And she points at the statue being tractor beamed into the ship. Um it... well, I can't do anything about it and get these people to safety at the same time. How far can you throw something? Well, I just moved us 20 meters and I can't really move anything else right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, land us and yeet me up there next time. <laughs> I can't just yeet you. <laughs> I, I weigh a lot less than four than 800 pounds. <laughs> yeah, but I can't yeet people. I have to yeet objects. <laughs> well, I'm a woman, so think of me as an object like you normally do. <laughs> everybody else off and I'll kind of hop down off the platform. <laughs> yeah, Paul gets down and saddles up next to Rose. Let's just use the microphone. Take the microphone off and I'll stand with one foot on the microphone and eat that up. It's lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Once everybody hops off, I'll just uh, get prepared to send Anne flying up on my next turn. I have a mag rifle. I can't damage the ship. I have to get up there where I can start killing people and then I can send it back down. <laughs> uh, Corval, do you see some sort of 
as you turn and you're teleporting and you look back, you see some sort of interaction. Uh, you heard the gunshot. You see some, and then you just see that Paul and the floor manager are getting off the uh, flying scrap metal. And the people are still running towards our ship. Yeah, they're still running towards your ship. Yeah. So uh, he's Corvald's gonna stay on that mission to protect the Glazerite. Okay. Because Corvald knows that Glazerites. He knows that Glazerites used for cloaking, and if they're stealing this, they probably also want to be cloaked so that nobody can find them. Um. So he's gonna at least try to prevent one part of their plan. Okay. Let's let's be honest. We just don't like Niles at this point. <laughs> yeah. Also, Corvald wants to. Uh, blue balls Nile, a uh, blue ball Nile as much as he can. <laughs> deny, deny, deny. That <laughs> cobalt goes another hundred meters ahead of them, so he's now about a hundred and eighty meters ahead of them. Yep. <laughs> he, uh, I, so he teleports as an action, and then his bonus or his his move action would go for another thirty. So like he could be moving one hundred thirty meters. Oh. Uh, Per round, man. <laughs> okay. Or not 100, 110, sorry, 110 meters. 110 meters, yeah. <laughs> Bunko, okay. 130. Jesus, you're fast. Uh, I would say that, like, at the end of next round, oh, give me another save. You will be at the ship. Come on. You can do a Corvold. Hey, I got a nat 20 this time. Okay. So it, uh, so that annoying, like, a static, uh, distorted hum in your head actually sounds harmonious at this point. Does it? Does it sound like a particular harmony? Is it like a theme song? Yeah, whatever Corvald's favorite song is, it seems to turn into that. Okay. Surfing with the Alien by Steve Vai. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know what Corvald's favorite theme song is yet, but you'll you'll figure it out. I'd. Uh, I went before Corvald this time. Okay, so Anne May, you're on the magic uh, metal carpet. Yep, I'm going to sling my rifle on my back and prepare to be yeeted and to jump onto a statue that's flying up into a tractor beam. Oh dear, this couldn't possibly end poorly. <laughs> I couldn't hear it ending poorly, no. Okay. I do may fire when ready. And hold my action to jump on and grab it. The rest of them are running down the hill and still towards the ship. And there's a commotion up there as the remaining members have opened their door to below. Let's see. Uh, well, you wouldn't. Yeah, Corval wouldn't hear it. Maybe I would have heard that old that steel door entrance uh, open up as it makes a noise. Um, and that's you know that would be all you would hear. Um, Corval, go ahead. Or, I mean, uh, I'd go ahead. Are you gonna eat uh, Anne May over there? Yeah, I'll send her thirty meters up toward the ship. Okay. Use all the strength you have and just keep pushing her even further. <laughs> That's as far as I can push you. <laughs> so yeah, you're going back up the hill, up to the hill as this thing is being pulled into the ship. And you look down and there's like a trap door that's open and they're all, the river, whoever's left is all climbing down in there. In the ship or in the- uh, Into mound? the mound, yeah. Mound, okay. How high up is the ship from us? Thousand meters. What about in cubits? <laughs> 38.7. Okay, so that's a much better measurement for me then. Um, in that case, and how high up is the statue? Uh, it's probably a third of the way. So it's probably like 300 meters up. Okay, and you said that a door opened on the ship and there are people looking down? Uh, there's a door, so there's a door in the mound, mm -hmm. like where the statue was, where everybody's standing around, that, that they live inside the mound, so they open that door and they're going in there. 
Is there anyone visible on the ship, or is it just being sent up into the ship? It's just being sure. sent up. I'd, I need more speed! <laughs> uh, I will let you make, if you want to make a roll to jump on it, exert. To jump on it? Uh, okay. <laughs> you could jump or wait another turn. Well, the plan always was to jump, so we're going to... We're going to try yeeting it up there. Okay. Those are D6s, correct? Mm-hmm. Exact. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 total? So you run and jump and grab onto the edge of the, uh, the statue as it's being tractor beamed up, and you're starting to slide down, and these hands okay. that the writhing bodies they're re- they're kind of hard to see start mm-hmm. to unfurl themselves and grab your hands to c- grab onto you so you hold on give me a mental save oh dear okay oh no <laughs> well that's a natural 20 actually so that's not bad okay all right so yeah you uh you feel their presence uh in your mind but uh that's as far as it goes Ooh, tighter. <laughs> but yeah, they've grabbed on and like are helping you up, uh, helping you on the statue. Okay. Thanks, thanks, dangerous statue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank evil statue of destruction with another me standing on it. How are you today? I picture um, the I picture the mental save as Anne May going, "No, I am the one. You will answer." To- me <laughs> i'm the one no i'm the one no i'm the one no i'm the one <laughs> very annoying you uh you hear rose as she's standing there she's like use the fire and looks at i she's like what is she doing i i told you she's panicking she's like charlie are you any better he's like yeah i think i think i'll be okay Corvald, you are now at the ship. Okay. He didn't need to teleport again? Uh, yeah, you've teleported again and you're at the ship. Okay. So it depends because because I have three effort that I can commit and I, I have to, I, to teleport 100 meters, I have to commit effort for the scene. So I've done it twice and I have a plan that's going <laughs> to, that, that requires that I keep at least one point of effort <laughs> um, so uh he will like teleport you know he will like do his normal movement to get to the ship 10 meters but he's uh, not going to spend his last effort unless i can use an action point to uh teleport without penalty without yeah i'll let you i mean if that's what you want to use your action point you can yeah i mean it's certainly uh not going to help my rules tonight so might as well use it for something that'll get me a little bit closer (laughs) yeah okay you're there corval is in and he is going to look for the glazerite okay um i'm assuming you know where it is yep yeah he's going to go find he's going to go get it and put it into uh the inside pocket of his robe (laughs) <laughs> um, and make sure to tie the the strings real like the the, the golden sash mm-hmm. nice and tight. He'll put like a double uh it'll like a double overhand on that. <laughs> and yeah, I think that will be basically his turn. Um, next he's he's gonna you know next he's gonna try to see if he can get the ship off the ground. Okay, uh, use an action point. I'll I'll. Give me a, give me a pilot roll. It's a six. Okay, so you, yeah, you're powering it up. The next turn, you'll be able to get this thing off the ground. You uh, you do hear a distinct noise of like something impacting the side of the ship, like a big thing or like a doo, 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 like no, like a big thing. Yeah, Cor- Corval's gonna. Focus on the mission in hand. Okay. Uh, all right, you're up. 
Um, so the the disc that I floated Ann May up on before she jumped off of it, that kind of went diagonal away from us, correct? Yeah, however you want it, wherever you wanted it to go. Yeah, I'm just going to stop focusing on that and let gravity take over. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just going to let that thing come back down on its own. Okay. And uh, I'm going to take my telekinetic rifle. Let's see. What is the range on that thing? Because I kind of forgot. Of course, d d or Roll20 doesn't have a range on the weapon. Oh, here we go. 400 meters is like the long range. Is the ship within that? You said it was like 1,000 meters up, didn't you? Uh, yeah, you be, wouldn't be able to sh hit the ship, but you could hit the uh, the statue if you wanted. Okay, I'll, I'll make an attempt at the statue. Okay. 13. Yeah, that's a hit. Okay. And I want to use the, the fire because Rose was yelling at us to okay. use the fire. So that is a five on the regular and another four from the fire. Okay. So, Anne May, as you're up there, be, the hands are like holding on to you. You then you see something impact the statue, and one of these things screams as it like catches fire and burns a little bit, and then then like reforms itself. That's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you mean? Use the, use the fire like that on the statue. She's like, yes, exactly. Don't let them get it. I'd, what was that? <laughs> I'm doing what Rose said. <laughs> Why are we shooting the nice statue that's done nothing but help me? That statue is evil. It tried to kill me in Corval. And it Did like, you really try to kill him in Corval? <laughs> it made like a copy of you. A copy of me? Don't be ridiculous. Look up. It's just a statue of me. <laughs> Many men have done the same thing. <laughs> you live a weird life. Uh, that'll end my turn. I'm going to stay put and see what happens. Okay. And May, you're up. Now, they said don't let them get the statue. They didn't say destroy the statue, correct? Technically, you're correct, yes. Because <laughs> I'm not sure if this thing should be destroyed. It's done nothing wrong. Okay, I'm going to pull myself up the statue first and foremost so I'm actually standing on something. Yep. I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to look at the Anne May up there. Is she looking back? Uh, I mean, she's not moving, but she seems to be looking at you, yeah. yeah does it look like she's angry or anything, or is she just kind of chilling? She looks relaxed. Great. How high up are we now? Uh, four or five hundred meters. Oh, five hundred meters, the long range of this thing. I'm going to shoot at the ship's tractor beam. Okay. Do exactly what I was told to. Use the fire. But screw it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's going to go ahead and be an auto hit because I'm a fighter and I don't feel like rolling an at one on that. <laughs> That is uh, uh, 19 points of damage, and I'm going to use the fire with it to shoot at the tractor beam emitter. Another three points of fire damage, because screw that thing. Use the force, and may. Use the fire. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you... Uh... And you see, you can see in the the distance like a spark, and then the little flame, and the statue is moving, and then it it jumps down a little bit, and a little bit more, and uh, uh, who knows how stable this tractor beam is right now? Not very. <laughs> Don't be standing underneath me when I come down. <laughs> I'm saving the statue. It is good. It has done nothing but good things for the world. <laughs> Question is, can the planet save another hit from Statue of Evil? <laughs> <laughs> Most evil thing here is you, Corvald. What? 
<laughs> you know what you did. I'm not going to have my pacifist run run because some watery fink told me to kill a statue that did uh, nothing wrong. Uh, let's, let's see. Corval to Eid. I can't hit the ship and and May seems to have a plan, so I'm just going to kind of stand here and wait to see how bad this goes. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure you catch. <laughs> oh, good point. I'll, I'll float that piece of metal back up like halfway between. <laughs> okay. It's okay. The solid piece of metal will break my fall. <laughs> well... Since you're not landing on it right now, I'll be able to lower it slowly as you approach it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it might catch, like, if you, like, if it, like, brings it down, like, as you're coming down, so it kind of, like... Hey, if off. Superman can come flying by faster than the speed of sound and catch Lois Lane inches off the ground without snapping her in two, I can handle this, okay? Corvall's going to fly the ship because uh, <laughs> he's at second turn. Okay. <laughs> Give me a pilot roll. Six. So you're you start to lift the ship off, and something hits the windshield, the uh, the windscreen, the windshield of the ship. It looks like one of those guys, and it hits the uh, the windshield. It splats like you know when they die, just like their body and uh, their the, those gloves, and the, just kind of slides off. And is because you're flying, it's you know, not a perfect takeoff, and you kind of look down through the muck, and you see Splat there, like, raising his arm as he's pointing to these uh, these guys who are running towards the ship, and, like, and he runs over and grabs another one. Oh. <laughs> I thought they had, like, a, a, a guy trebuchet with a bunch of trebuchets, and they were just yeeting them up towards the ship. So, the, so like, he grabs another one and then it's splat on the windshield so he can <laughs> can infer that Splat is throwing people at the ship. <laughs> yes. Corvold, use the windshield wipers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, need a pilot roll to see if you can find him. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Corvold is going to uh, fly towards the statue. Okay. Yeah, I guess if we have weapons, I, I I don't remember if we have weapons that are like that I can control from the pilot's chair or if they're like separate. There was a weapon on the ship. Weapons. Oh, think, do you have a ship that is a weapon? I think generally in this system, there's a separate station for a gunner. Yeah, but yeah. we we do have a weapon on that ship. It was a plasma emitter or something like that. Yeah. 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 Technically, you can fire it, but you'd be doing it at... Or technically, you just need to go ahead and go through the ship combat rules. You you are doing everything, so you do every action to build up points, and then you can shoot it, I think, twice. Well, you've got... Um, oh, you've yeah. got two people on the ship with you, right? Yeah, have them do their duty. They know what their duty is, right? We have Duncan. We have Duncan. There were two Deviants and Duncan on the ship, I believe. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, there's some yeah. people, other people on the ship, correct. You may fire when ready. Get in, the, get, in the, get in the gunner seat and shoot at that ship. Uh, Mel's like, hell yeah. And he <laughs> sits his ass down in there, fucking with my pie shop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he'll just uh, fly him to get uh, fly closer to get in range and if possible kind of just hover there okay mal actually served in the sisters of common militia for um yeah. 18 years until he was uh, medically discharged so they didn't have to give him retirement pay <laughs> that's why he opened a pie shop mm -hmm. <laughs> uh all right so you're setting that up uh did you go yet i yeah, I put the big, nice, yeah. soft, cushy metal catcher's mitt up there to get Anne May. <laughs> All right, Anne May, you're up. Uh, I'd like to try piloting the statue towards the uh, ship that's coming to rescue me. <laughs> oh, we're still on the tractor beam, aren't we? I might make it difficult to pilot it. Um, how fast are we descending at the moment in the unstable tractor beam of happiness? It's not really, it's, it's still going up, but very slow. You know, it's like, it's 
it's uh, jostling back and forth, but you're actually, you are still going up. Stupid tractor beam, I want to go down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she knows who she is. An anime protagonist. Um, that's uh, 15 plus, uh, yeah, a dirty 20 for, to hit. Okay. Uh, 15 points of damage and more fire for three more flaming damage because she said use the fire. Okay, so give me give me an exert roll as the tractor beam is destroyed and there's a small localized fire now on that ship and, and the, the statue is like plummeting. Ooh, it's going good. at a very accelerated rate. I, I assume you're jumping off and getting on to the, uh, the metal. Yep. As he's like, yep. Uh, okay. We're actually going to go ahead and not use that exert roll. We're going to use a hustle point to re-roll that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot better. I will take that one. Uh, 13. <laughs> okay, give me a telekinetics, uh, telekinesis roll. I'd... <laughs> now you've had it. <laughs> believe in yourself, I'd. Oof. I believe, but the dice don't believe as much. That's a 8. I get you have a hustle eight. point that believes even more. <laughs> no, it's a 9. Yeah, hey. that's not too bad. Uh, I'm not bad. I'm aiming for it. Do you have a vac suit on? I do. I have my armored vac suit on. Okay. What's the D DR on it? Four. Okay. So you take two damage as you slam into this metal thing. It's now a DR three. But it caught you as this statue goes straight down and impacts the mound and just continues to go. <laughs> How'd they stop it the first time? <laughs> I don't think they're going to. I think this time it's going all the way to the core of the planet and going to detonate. <laughs> Here comes Corvald in our Uber. <laughs> our Spooba. 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 Spooba at your service. <laughs> Corvald, why are you speaking in incomprehensible language and acting like you're on the phone? We all know you're not talking to anyone on your Bluetooth. Corval, beam us up. Corval, beam us up. Now, now, engage. <laughs> What's with all the sudden chest? Are we still in turn order? Um, yes. Your floating scrap heap is about to be shot at <laughs> by a capital ship. <laughs> it doesn't stand a chance against my mag rifle of destiny. <laughs> all I gotta do is use the force. In the exact right spot, and it'll blow up. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're exactly Use right. the fire. <laughs> Duncan's gonna aim at it like that stray anchovy he dropped on the floor. Um, I right, get me high. I'm gonna go for a trench run. <laughs> <laughs> go for the exhaust port. <laughs> so, Corvald, as you're flying up, you see the the, the ship above you. You now see the, the the statue get released and plummet to the ground. Anne May jumps and lands on that metal piece. <laughs> and like in your like to your um, to like the opposite side over the horizon in the moonlight, you see these metal objects. They look like they're flying. Like you look and you see one and you two. You see like a whole uh, flock of them flying towards you and these little streaks of light come and they you see them ping off the ship um doesn't do any damage just you know you can feel them impact but something is separate from this ship now it could have come from that ship but it's coming in a separate direction um is Anne may still floating there uh yeah corval's going to uh pilot the ship uh and the pole luke skywalker and like by <laughs> by under her like hopefully somewhat near the hatch so she can come in. <laughs> okay. All right, Duh, just give me a pilot roll. <laughs> hopefully this is good hand, man. Otherwise you end up like that guy on the windshield. I believe in you. <laughs> Remember, you can use your intelligence for pilot sex too. <laughs> I've been using wisdom because uh, Corval. Uh, goes with the force uh this is a four okay 
it takes you a moment so it's not you know perfect but you are if she falls she'll at least land on the ship perfect you're, you're underneath her but you're a bit diagonal <laughs> uh i'd uh let's see corvald's pretty much maneuvered under her so i don't need to move the disc anywhere but i do have to hold it there uh does it take my no it doesn't take my action to keep it there is there anything around it needs to be shot at like near the ship or anime um flat you're on the ground so it's hard for you to see you see like like a swarm in the distance but it's so far off and you see that ship and paul and the tour manager and uh rose and uh charlie are next to you yeah uh gather up your stuff when anime gets off i'll bring the platform down and we'll get on the ship Ooh. and i hold my action until anime gets clear of the platform okay lower me down to the hatch <laughs> <laughs> all right all right you do that um uh rose says uh just get paul and the and the uh, his tour manager out of here. We'll you're, talk later. You're not coming with us. No, no, I'm 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 calling off uh, this shoot for for this evening. Let's go. Let's go, uh, uh, Charlie. He's like, oh, why, why don't we just oh, man? We got to walk all the way back down there. And May, you're on top of the ship. Uh, well, I should be. Um, yes, I have a terrible idea. Um, I'm going to get onto the ship, go through the hatch, and okay. I'm going to radio to Corvald. Corvald, get us above the other ship and prepare to open the cargo bay door. I have an idea. And I'm going to start running to the mech suit. I'm going to fist fight a ship. Excuse me. <laughs> as soon as she gets clear of the platform, I'm going to drop it down toward us 30 meters. Corvald will do that, although he's going to be wary of retaliation from this ship. So uh, he's going to to make careful movements and maneuvers to get uh, to the to get above it. Uh, so give me a pilot roll as you are maneuvering. I got a six. Okay. So you are moving your way. You maneuver your way like around the ship. The Anne May on top. Oh, no, she climbed. That's right. She climbed down. And as you maneuver the, around the ship, you can see this swarm is like moving in like a like one unit, like like uh, like a flock of of uh, birds or something like moving around towards you. And as you move around that ship, these guns just open fire, and a bunch of the sensors goes goes off as you've been struck. And um, somebody and, and uh, the deviant at the who is now melded to the chair is like, we have uh, uh, we've got a problem with the, the spike drive. There's been some damage to the engine room. I just fixed that thing. <laughs> <laughs> it requires maintenance. <laughs> Just get us above the other ship. I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> I'll have to wait. So I would. So you're um, you're maneuvering them closer. Yeah, I'm trying to get the platform back down here so the rest of us can get on it. Okay. And if this planet has gravity pretty close to that of Earth, it would actually be faster for me to just let go, let it fall, and then catch it right before it hits the ground. Okay. Yeah, because I can I can move it thirty meters, but it accelerates ten meters per second per second down, so it'll move fifty meters down in a turn on its own. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you do that. Uh, so you've got Paul and the bank and the bank and the tour manager with you. Yep. Now a bank manager. Yep. Um, trying to get them loaded up. Okay, and May, you're up. Yes. Um, how far am I away from the mech? uh you can like yeah you you know where it is you can run down and and suit up in it and next turn be ready to go yeah i'm gonna run down open up the back jump in the cockpit and get ready to uh go Call okay on, open the gates 
bottoms up or bottoms away and <laughs> he's like he, he opens up the uh, pretend you're b24 liberator and bomb me <laughs> <laughs> he opens up the hatch again the ship is kind of like rocked a little bit because of the uh the the cruiser fires again and hits it and you can see it you know a bunch of lights and everything goes off and of course everybody's got crappy fuses and they all explode and <laughs> part of the uh the weapon system like so basically your weapon if you were to use your uh plasma emitter or whatever it would be difficult to use because the whole targeting system has been completely wiped out and now you can see like these flying now they now they've gotten a lot closer they look like uh robots or something that they're flying and they have wings um and over the comms you can hear like like you're picking up radio static and you just hear exterminate 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 oh no uh, <laughs> and may you jump out the back and land on the fleet cruiser yes and uh, I do happen to have something very specific for this called bre two breaching tools on each of this thing's arms. Okay. I would like to penetrate the cruiser. Just two fists right into the back of the cruiser and go, boom, boom. <laughs> just blow my hole through there and jump inside. Okay. Yeah, you blast the shit out of it. <laughs> Pieces of metal come flying up. And you see all these like metal uh, flying robots flying around. And you're picking up on your your outside uh, comms. Exterminate! Exterminate! Gonna rip the hole open wide enough I can get the mech in and go, here's Anme! Corval, uh, you feel, you see another, some more lights go off, some more fuses that haven't blown, blow again. And uh, like the impulse power has died. So basically you just kind of like a rift. As these flying metal things, if they fly and you can feel them attached to the ship, like dong, dong. It's a bunch of Anne May's cousins. Oh no. <laughs> we are the Daleks. You will be pacified. <laughs> I mean, and then the Borg show up. I think, uh, I think Corval's going to get out of the way. Um, and fly because he's on. He's he's. Well, I guess like it's it's. Uh, he can't really move. You could just land on top of that fleet cruiser. It's plenty big enough. Yeah, that's what they want <laughs> to do. Um, Corval's going to try to to fix uh, fix the uh, the movement. Okay. Yeah. So. so then, okay. Sure so give me a fix roll. Seven. Uh, yeah. You, next turn, you'll be able to maneuver the ship. I'd um, you manage to get the group together and fly up next to the ship uh, and get in if you wish, or I don't know, are you going into the other ship as Anne May? As you see a hole in that one, and you see all these metal flying things have attached themselves to your ship. No, I'm going to try to get on board and see if I can't help Corval and get Paul and the manager at least relatively safe. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, you get in the open cargo bay and fly in, and you're on the ship now. As you hear all kinds of alarms going off. And oh, uh, well, I'm going to have to organize this again. It's a mess. <laughs> All right, you, you two get up to your, your uh, rooms and lock the doors. I'm going to go see if I can help Corvald. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, Paul, give me that. And I snatch the microphone that's been, like, possessed all the whole time. <laughs> okay. And he's like, uh, uh, I'm signed for that. <laughs> I'll give it back to you when we're out of here. I just want to check it out first. I can probably fix it. Don't worry. Guess I'm not getting paid for that show. <laughs> uh, okay. So, Anne May, you're up. 
you inside the inside this portion of this fleet cruiser, you hear alarms and stuff going off. Yes. Uh, where is the bridge on this ship design? It would probably take you roughly about four turns to get there from your present location. Is it uh, whereabouts for me? How many floors up and how many floors to the left or right? Well, right uh, me. Like two floors up mm -hmm. and to the left. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is pull my right arm back and punch a hole through the ceiling above me. <laughs> Okay. And uh, just jump up one floor, then use All the right. left arm, dive two, and punch a hole in the next one and jump up to the other floor. And then uh, start heading my way to the bridge. You're not going to get in the freight turbo lift and just say bridge? <laughs> yeah, they normally don't take freight to the bridge. The freight turbo lift might, but not the freight turbo lift. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's, there's uh, more alarms going off, and you can see uh, some people kind of like in the hallway putting on helmets and masks like securing themselves and they're opening doors running out uh, they seem to be wearing they're like they're wearing like black uniforms with turtlenecks um, they've got like a you know they've got a laser pistol one guy runs out and like shoots and it doesn't do any damage to the mech suit so just kind of pings off of it as they just like they're running down the hall away from this thing so they're wearing pure black uniforms? With turtlenecks, yes. Turtlenecks? Goddamn Nazis. Every one of them. They're the SS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anne May is going to start killing Nazis on board this ship then, because that she is certain that's what these are now. <laughs> they're wearing SS uniforms. They are the goddamn Nazis. It's the turtleneck mafia. <laughs> the turtle um, Nazis. Give me a no roll. I know wrong. I know nothing. And May, she's an idiot. Uh, oh my god, I rolled very high on the dice. Up. She might not be. She knows this. <laughs> she knows a Nazi when she sees it. Okay, so that's minus one for intelligence. That's minus another one for not knowing anything. Uh, that is still a nine. I rolled an eleven. <laughs> so, in your understanding of history, specifically Sindum history, you. Do you like those look like old uniforms like from like a hundred or two hundred years ago? That's what I said, Nazis. She was she was desperately planning to marry her a Sindhu man, so she knows all their outfits. I know a good Sindhu man when I see one. Mm hmm <laughs> Well, this is going well. Is uh, it you may have uh, communications like com yeah. links with everyone else still? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm still wearing my vac suit and I'm also in a mech. I have double communications. So do you say anything about seeing this? Oh, yeah. I'm like, the damn Nazis, they're in pure black. <laughs> wow, what are Nazis? It's like Sindhum, but worse. So are there Sindhum? So I think so. They look kind of like old Sindhum uniforms. How old? Um, about a hundred years or so. Either they're really into the retro look, or we've we've gone back again. There's one alternative that's even worse, which is the most likely situation. Then they're cosplayers. <laughs> Oh my, we can't have that. We'll have to kill every one of them. That's the only way to be sure. Corvald set a collision course. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this is very concerning. We might be in a simulation then. <laughs> then I'll rip and tear until we're out of the simulation. <laughs> Corvald, if we were in a simulation, Rose would have stayed with you. I mean, she was a lot younger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but still too old for me. <laughs> no, not old enough. <laughs> I like them raggedy. Corvald only dates older women. <laughs> like someone with some miles on them. <laughs> 
Well, we need to see if we can break out. Um, Corvald like thinks back to the last time that uh, they ran into the statue, and there were like things that just didn't quite seem right. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to reflect upon like, besides the fact that uh, you know, he now he's going to reflect upon other things that may like if, to see if there's any he can draw any parallels. So yeah, there was weird time distortions before, especially with this statue. So yeah, there's there there are certain things that aren't really adding up. Like why does Rose look the way she looks? Like these uh, these guys and these you know who came after you just like died. Their weapons didn't seem to work or whatever. They died pretty quickly. And, um, so there's a lot of weird things going on. You hear a noise and then like the whole weapon system goes offline as you can see it's been ripped off and jettisoned out and you can see it being hurled. Ah, uh, that's not good. <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, I forgot his name. Pie shop owner. <laughs> Mel. What's going on there, Mel? He's pulling the trick. He's like, I got nothing. I got nothing. Well, son of a bitch. Give me a weapon or something. I'll go out there and knock him in the head. We've got a weapon. Okay. Get your vac suit on. We're going to jump. Oh, my. Hell yeah. So he starts uh, getting his vac suit on. And Corvald will. And Cor what Corvald's going to do is uh, set a collision course. The cruiser? The cruiser. <laughs> get above it. <laughs> we don't need a ship to get out of here. <laughs> All right. Break them both. <laughs> All right. What are you doing? If I heard Corvald on comm saying that we're about to set a collision course and jump, I'll probably be near the cargo hatch. <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, I'll probably be yelling at Paul and his manager to get back down here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to even attempt to try to talk Corvald out of it. <laughs> nah. <laughs> All right, so Corvald, you're getting your gear on. Uh, and May, you're up. Yes, I'd like to continue slaughtering my way towards the bridge. <laughs> okay, yeah, just people are just running, uh, shooting at you, not doing any damage as you're smashing shit. Yeah, anyone uh, who gets uh, close enough to me to be within arm's length, I'm just grabbing them by the head and then going to activate the breaching charge in the hand and blow up them up. <laughs> Not even breaking stride, just keep walking the boom. <laughs> you see, she's pacifying them all. Peacefully. True, true pacifist run. Just pacify all your enemies. Exactly. <laughs> They're so peaceful in death. <laughs> they are. They look happier this way. <laughs> Missing everything from the waist up looks a lot nicer, too. <laughs> So uh, you you hear all the si you know all the, the sirens and you see the smoke and the and the small fires and people running and you're uh, uh, blasting them with the uh, what breaching tool <laughs> incinerating breaching them uh, and you catch like you know uh, some of the uh, you're catching all the noises and stuff and you catch the voice of somebody who sounds like um reminds you of muzz muzz mm -hmm. one of niles's crew and you hear them say uh kid kid get get back and tell niles to to, to bar that door and in your frame of view ahead of you you see a young kid come bolting out of a hallway and running fast as he can hmm uh, these, there's doors around me, correct? And there's bodies and things still? Yep. 
I like to grab one of the exploded bodies and just yeet it at the kid. <laughs> okay, give me a... All right, give me a... A javelin throw? Give me a punch, right? Um, well, I am throwing it at him. How far is the kid from me? I don't know, 50 meters. 50, okay, yeah, I am just throwing something, so would it be... Um, it wouldn't be gun. Yeah, it would probably be punch then. Let's go with punch. That works. Uh, 15, 16, 17, uh, 17 to hit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you eat uh, a dead body. Or uh, technically 19 to hit. Yeah, uh, I, I eat one of the dead. <laughs> and he's running, it hits, it sprawls him against the. And he slides onto the onto the floor, and there's some more people that come out and like step over him and are running. I never said you could leave. <laughs> Let's keep walking towards them. Corvault. Oh wait, wait. Uh, yeah, you're you're prepping all this stuff. You get you got your back suit on. Um, and uh, next thing you know, you the the the. Uh, the, the deviants like the spike drive's dead so are a damaged. lot of the people on this ship we're going to fight with the only weapon that we have left he's like our dignity no <laughs> a long time ago <laughs> oh, my. oh my dear young one we're going to fight fire with a hulking piece of metal. <laughs> Get ready to evacuate. You won't have much time after the collision. Paul just walks onto the. Well, I just got here. What are we doing? Getting a better ship. <laughs> this door sucks. And you're All not right. even under contract. Uh, okay, so. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a pilot. Well, yeah, I'll give you a piloting role with a bonus die because you've got the deviant helping you. Uh, so we just decide where you want to hit this ship. Bonus die, it is a 10. Okay, so where you want to impact this ship? <laughs> Without Not the engine room. <laughs> yeah, uh, Corval's thinking the bridge. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Maybe the hangar deck instead. <laughs> so um, destroy the bridge. He's, 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 you know, he's juggling. He's trying to think of where he can do the most damage. Um, <laughs> well, I think the idea is to capture it, not destroy it. <laughs> uh, not Corvald's idea. <laughs> Corvald was never a pirate. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Maybe the uh, he over the comms. Where should I hit this thing? <laughs> um, Air deck, fighter bay, uh, uh, crew quarters. Hit the crew quarters. <laughs> uh, the crew quarters. It is. <laughs> For a rude awakening. <laughs> then the herd. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I don't know if he'd be able to actually tell where the crew quarters are. <laughs> uh, so in lieu of that, uh, you know, he if if you can if he's able to ascertain where that is because he's absolutely is that we uh, the the ship that we were on with Niles before it's not the same ship, right? Is it no. Ship? No, this is the one that got spiked into another ship, so it's hodgepodge in the first place. Yeah, so that means, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, he'll try aim for the crew quarters or the hangar bay. Okay. Um, give me a D6 uh, roll. Even crew quarters, odd hangar bay. Uh, it's a three, so to the hangar bay we go. Okay, yeah, that's the closer one. 
uh, and the deviant's like, well, uh, if you got to go, you got to go, because he can't move out of the seat because he's like melded to it. <laughs> Rusty's going out with a bang. <laughs> uh, and Paul and the, the tour manager like hurriedly getting their back suits on and like bracing for impact as the ship, and you can hear like exterminate, exterminate, and slams you. Uh, and may you can feel something slam into the side of the of the cruiser and more alarms and stuff goes off and you can see feel it shake uh she gets an absolute shit-eating grin as she starts speeding up her movements <laughs> <laughs> like yes <laughs> uh and may you're up okay uh how far am i away from the uh, kid in the door where i heard this all take place in uh 50 meters oh lovely I'd like to uh, saunter over to them with a speed of five, which is, I forget the translation of speed in mechs and shit. You needed ground vehicle speed. Yeah, but said, oh, go with the ship speeds on one so day. What, what's uh, your intent? My intent is to make my way up to the door, stomp down on that kid's spine to make sure he stays down, and then see who was yelling at him to go ahead and <laughs> stop me from entering by barring the door. Okay, so uh, you're gonna step on him and then like go through the door. Yes. Okay. The step yeah, isn't really necessary, but she's kind of in a bloodthirsty mood at the moment and enjoying herself. Uh, yeah, you, you see his horrified face as he looks up and you just stomp right on him and you crunch. <laughs> you know, grinds it a bit with her toes just to be sure, then looks through the door. Boom. Knock knock. We gave your voice the F three fifties voice box. Your mech. <laughs> knock knock. <laughs> you require, require maintenance. <laughs> um. Uh, Corbald, you got a back suit on, right? Yeah. What kind of back suit is it? Just a regular back suit. Okay. It's the ones we got out of the mech, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Is it still the not the not the oh, space dollar to... general one? We uh okay. We replaced those on the mech that anime's in now. Okay. Do you remember what the damage resistance was? I think you told us four. Okay. All right. So you take um two damage and it's down to three. That's for Corvald as you as you impact and slam into the side of the ship, and that deviant is just like destroyed as it like impacts the side. Um, uh, I do take, uh, if you've got the same one, you take no damage as you're thrown around. Yeah, I would, I would like to think that I'd in the cargo bay is like floating on a box in the middle of the road, yeah. trying to move around. <laughs> uh, you guys are up. Uh, I'm going to rush to the door and start putting down some of Ide's famous covering fire out into the hallway. Even if there's nothing out there, he's just going to fire a couple rounds. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this thing only runs out of bullets if I pass out. Might as well use them, right? <laughs> Corvald. Uh, not one to leave anyone behind. He's going to... Uh... Does I I does I look like they're trying to board the ship? Uh, well, I did a different part of the ship. Oh, I did a different part of the ship. Coral's is going to jump out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, where is everyone? Is everyone okay? I'm fine. I've got cover and fire down here at the cargo bay the entrance in case anyone's trying to come on board. Pew pew ping 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 pew pew. <laughs> Should we? I was thinking we would just hopefully take it down and go back to the surface. Uh, should we leave? Uh, this might be our best ride out of here. We should probably try to not take it down. <laughs> I mean, that hill calling didn't seem so bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> One of these days, Corvald, I'm going to take you to a nice resort and you're going to learn what not bad really is. <laughs> All we're right. We're going to set you up next to the pool and have beautiful women feed you grapes. You'll love it. We need to find, we need to uh, find Niles. If this is going to be the case, we don't need to end him right away. Let's run towards the screaming. <laughs> hear that, Niles? <laughs> As, as we hear people screaming and gunshots going off and stuff, I'm going to point and be like, anime is that way. <laughs> so Corvo will then get like out of the, uh, try to find a, uh, a newly formed entrance. <laughs> cruiser. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah, you can. You could either head out uh, out of the ship or go somewhere else. You uh, can go inside. He's gonna go meet up with Ide um, and rendezvous with Ide. Okay, yeah, you run rendezvous with Ide. You know, you let him know friendly fire as Ide's like randomly shooting down the hallway. <laughs> I would like to say that a breaching tool is a combination of a pickaxe and demolition charge. A breaching tool <laughs> can be used to blow a mech-sized hole in any standard post-tech building material with one round of effort. <laughs> I'm using these against people. <laughs> Okay, so you are at the door, uh, Anne May. I'd like to gently knock on it with the two with the breaching tool. <laughs> Does okay. anyone know answer? No. Well, that's kind of rude. <laughs> Slam it open. Hello. <laughs> yeah, you smash it open, and a bunch of smoke comes out. It's very dark, and there's like these red lights that are in the room. It looks like a completely, out, it almost looks like a completely different part of the ship. Like it is, but it looks like way out of place. Hmm. Do I see anyone or anything in it? Uh, right now, no. Do I see any objects inside of it? Um, does the mech suit have any kind of infrared or anything like that? Uh, let me quickly look it over. I don't think we had polyspectral sensors on this, correct, if I recall? Yeah. No, okay. Um. So, uh, no, it does not. At least it doesn't say it has any that I can see. So I'll go with no. This room does have a roof to it, though, correct? Uh, yeah, see, like, yeah, like right now, you just, you're like in a real dark room with red lights coming down. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to completely block the doorway with my bulk and end my turn here. All right, Corvald, I. Corvald, is that you coming down the hallway? Yeah, it's me. Don't shoot. Can't you see my? Well, I guess you can't see my robe. I'm shooting out of the ship. You're coming up behind me, but good idea. <laughs> are we? Are we going to go toward Anne May? I'm pretty sure she's up the hallway where all the people are yelling and shooting. <laughs> Yes, we must go there. Um, just so you're aware, we're not in mech suits like she is. They might shoot us. Go there carefully. <laughs> Good point. Paul, send your manager in the front, please. <laughs> uh, it's like, you heard him. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I like to imagine Mel comes out there instead of a gun. He has two pies, one in each hand. <laughs> it's those two cold pies from like two days ago that you guys yeah. never ate. <laughs> it's like Xena Warrior Princess where he yeets it and it cuts off a man's head and then comes back to him. <laughs> you hear the sirens and the lights. Uh, see the lights flashing. It's getting dark in this ship as... Um, Probably, you know, power is, they're uh, moving power to different uh, systems. And Corvald and I, you make your way up to where Anne May is. And there's a long hallway of destruction. So it's obvious that's where she's been. <laughs> and there's a body of, looks like a kid. He looks familiar. It looks like Dane laying in front of the doorway. Oof. That's what you get for betraying us. 
Can't wait to see what happened to Niles. <laughs> Garrett was just you know, a felon with a bad crowd. Fell in or chose to join? Probably because he thought that they were cool. Yeah, not so cool now, huh? <laughs> like smoking that marijuana. <laughs> you shouldn't celebrate a child's death. Even if he was mis even if he did have ill intent for us. He's not dead. Look, he's still moving his eyes when we talk. He's just paralyzed from the neck down. Most of the internal organs are crushed. Here to be moving. Walk uh, it he's, bar <laughs> he's barely moving. You see that he is looking at you. You chose the wrong side, kid, and I just walk on by. Nothing personal, kid. <laughs> hey, I didn't hurt him. <laughs> Where's Niles? <laughs> he just blinks at you. Twice for yes, once for no. <laughs> Do you wish me to ease your suffering? <laughs> yes. Once for no. He blinks once. No. All right. Good luck. <laughs> uh, and May, you're walking down in this room and it's like completely dark. And it feels like you're in the room for, uh, I mean, except for the red lights, feels like you're in the room for a fairly long time. Um, but then Corvald and I appear in the room behind you. I do have the searchlight still on the mech, so those are blinding everyone in front of me. Right, yeah, but it's like this this large open room that doesn't seem to have anything in it, and it kind of goes on. It's weird. It doesn't seem like that would make sense. Hmm. Well, the kid was running out of the room. I got a bad feeling about this. Uh, how many decks of the ship would still be above and below me? There are two decks above you mm -hmm. and three below you. And this room just seems to go on and on with... Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's like it's almost a trick of the mind. Well, I have no intention of staying in here. That's going to reach my arm up and blow a hole through the ceiling again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's some light and metal and stuff comes down and uh, it looks very different. Ah. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, there um, you go. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm going up a floor. <laughs> the self-destruct sequence has now been set. You have exactly one minute. Okay, so Corvault and now, I mean, in uh, I, are you following in May? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. I'd spend this close to death for days. Why, why bother backing <laughs> off now? <laughs> yeah, so when you come into the room, it the room looks isn't very big. It looks like she just walked into the room and blasted a hole in the top of it and climbed in, and you guys follow her. Uh, you go in, you start to enter what looks like something like now like it holds you know doesn't fit the aesthetic of the ship it's there's a lot of metal uh that sort of like reflects everything it looks pristine like undamaged from anything that's going on and uh looking to the side you're you you're looking out like glass windows and you see a vast city like that doesn't make any sense and they're all metal con, you know, all metal buildings and small little ships flying everywhere, like you're in the middle of a city, like on a walking inside one of these buildings. Do we hear something still talking about self-destruct? Um, yeah, faintly, yes. 45 seconds to self-destruct. Niles, what the hell have you done now? Uh, how high up are we in meters? Uh, it's, I, I mean, you're going to go to the window and look. Yeah, <laughs> give me a notice roll. If everybody does that, all right. No training in that, so well, that's not bad. Um, that's nine. 
Okay. Same. Six. Is there a math skill check? Can we just drop Niles and count how many seconds he falls and do the math for gravity and figure out the height? <laughs> It looks like maybe you're like a hundred meters in the air. And there's a maybe, building. Huh? And the, this is a solid building where inside of Yeah, you feel like you're in a solid building. You don't really you hear the you hear the noises of uh you know faintly the alarms and everything you can sort of hear, but there's no flashing lights. There's no it's uh, it's all auditory and you can hear like 35 seconds. To self-destruct. Well, either it's going to self-destruct or it's not going to self-destruct. One way to find out. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Both of you grab my back. <laughs> I do have cargo space for up to, uh, I think it's eight tons of cargo. You can hide in the cargo compartment on the back. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Corval uh, won't, won't question it. Good. Um, I'm then going to, once they're inside, Punch a hole through the window's glass. Okay. And uh, does it still appear to be a, bit, a city? Uh, you smash the glass and you look out and the glass falls and you can see these like uh, flying boxes, metal transports fly by. Yeah, it looks like a city. You're like... Okay. Um, I'm going to proceed to jump down and use my arms to brace myself and kind of Fresh my way down the wall with the arm using for support. <laughs> okay, so you smash the glass and jump down and like scrape down, like going down the wall. Yep. Oh, let me. See. Um, I think the mech can go ahead and actually jump forty meters without taking any damage from the fall. I'm trying to find where it is. Um, okay. Okay. So for meters. It's, I have a speed of five, and for a light and heavy mech, multiply it by 20 meters, so I have 100 meters movement per turn. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. So you jump and slide down the, the wall. Yep. <laughs> Sending metal and all kinds of shit flying in the air. And you <laughs> well, land. The cargo compartment. <laughs> yeah. They got their little heads sticking out. <laughs> it's a little backpack. They're like purse puppies. Piss you lay and slam onto the ground and like ripple the ground. And no one seems to notice. Like whatever these flying things are, these like uh like transport things don't even seem to nothing seems to change at, at all. And you're staring at this big window, like as you land, that's cracked and busted because you've landed. And you you peer through the window as you hear the countdown, 10, 9, and you look in, and in this room with all these, there's all these tubes and lights and these, uh, uh, yeah, like these tubes going into a person who has these black eyes and they're all like stuck to his body. He's kind of like floating in the air. You realize as you're looking at him, it's Niles. And then standing next to him is Dane. And Dane looks kind of looks at you and then he looks at Niles as he's kind of like floating in the air with all these tubes. And he says, I'll see you soon. And everything, you hear the explosion of whatever went off. And in a second, uh, you guys are floating out into space. Uh, you look around and there's like this ship, whatever, there's this ship that's been utterly destroyed and pieces of it are just floating everywhere. Are we in the middle of space or like, are we in the middle of space or is like, are we like in like near the, uh, like this planet, the planet's orbit that we're around? There looks to be like a nebula near you. Um, and you can see like a, a patrol, yeah, patrol boat kind of slowly flying by. And you hear a voice like, uh, Hold on, I'm coming to get you. Thank you. 
uh, and it you know flies up next to you guys as you guys are just floating into space in space and the pieces of the ship are like everywhere. Um, and they you know you see these guys and um, pull it back. So it's like brown. I think it's brown. Yeah, and like these brown vac suits come out and start pulling you guys in and uh, proceed to take you into like the med bay. So, you know, for examination and to check you out. One second, let me get out of this. <laughs> uh, are you all right? Are you, you okay? We, we, uh, we came as soon as we saw that explosion. I'm fine. I'm very beat up. I've been better. I'm going to feel my body. Do I still have that twisted ankle from when I fell on that piece of metal that I'd had floating up there? Yep. A little sore, but okay. You're supposed to bend your knees when you land. I did bend my knees, but I didn't expect to fall almost 200 feet. <laughs> they start doing a, a, a quick medical evaluation once they realize you got no serious injuries. Uh, we're looking for more survivors in case... Uh, there's any more out there? Where's my Paul? Oh yeah, the entertainer. Yeah, we found him. And his manager. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who else did you find so far? Uh, some some guy who claimed he owned a pie shop. Oh, that's Mal. Yep, he's good. Anybody else? Uh, no, we're still searching. Where are we? Uh, you're in the cloud system. Right outside the purple nebula. Thankfully, you didn't drift into it. Do you have any idea what happened to the ship? That flower. By the looks of it, it looks like a fleet cruiser. It looks like somebody, some crazy son of a bitch rammed it. <laughs> but... Uh, I don't know. It looked it's a hell of a mess. To say the least. All right, then. Thank you for the rescue. Yeah, no, no problem. I'm going to turn to the others. Yeah, we're going to have to find some way get, to get back to Earmac. That sounds like a tomorrow thing. I need to rest. That is a good idea. The manager survived. Surely he can call us another taxi ride. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. There's uh, in the uh, in the galley there on C deck. Um, there's an older lady said the uh, some guy in a bathrobe said they would. You know, when you're ready to come see him. Older lady and a guy in a bathrobe. Don't ask me. I just, uh, we picked them up as well. You know, see, I turn and look to make sure Corvald's Gladius is in its sheath where it belongs. It is. I'm to sharpen your sword. <laughs> just, just making sure you haven't messed time up, you know, banging on stuff. <laughs> <sighs> well, I guess we need to go see them then. Okay. Well, they are in the galley, so maybe we can get a sandwich. There's an idea. We're going to head to the galley for sandwiches. Okay. You head down to the sea, sea level. There's a lot of uh, hustle and bustle on the ship because... Uh, Everybody's like helping with this uh, search of the of the wreckage. And you hear uh, reports that they found like potential. Apparently, they think one of the ship was a deviant ship, so maybe that collided with this fleet cruiser. Uh, there's other reports that uh, the fleet cruiser was uh, potentially had uh, uh, symp uh, Sindun sympathizers on it. Because it had been spotted in different parts of the, uh, in different sectors. So there's all these reports coming in. Uh, and you get in the galley, there's nobody in here. There's some uh, food, questionable food uh, under uh, 
heat lamps and you see Rose in her older form sitting there and the guy and uh, Charlie is in his bathrobe <clears throat> relaxing. So there is no spaceway down here. I'm very disappointed I won't get a bad sandwich. <laughs> Good to see you, Rose. Oh, yes. I see you're up and about. It's uh, good. I was, was a bit concerned. Does Charlie duck when he sees Ann May? <laughs> uh, no. He's already forgotten being shot. <laughs> <laughs> or he doesn't care. Or maybe he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> And when you she work looks, the she looks at Charlie and she's like, get get the uh, get some, some food. Go, go. It's like, yes, yes, dear. He goes and grabs a plate and starts collecting random food off the from under the uh, the heaters, the heat lamps. So what about this Niles fellow? He seems to be a problem. To say the least. We should burn him. How did he do it? wasn't really sure at first, but um, Sindhoom had a lot of different experiments they ran when they were in charge in various mm -hmm. tech, uh, various technology. Uh, Niles used to be a Sindhoom scientist. I believe his name was Professor Kronos. That does sound like time, yes. Are you familiar with remote viewing? What, well, like um, going ahead and having two Netflix accounts opened in uh, two different rooms, even though you have the laptop in a different one? Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, that's what it's come to. I've been known to be a voyeur every now and then. That's <laughs> the kind of remote viewing you're talking about. <laughs> Wait you a just... second. You're the one who drove that hole? Ah, it wasn't me. <laughs> that was, uh, I was Mel. Oh. Mel, I need a word with you. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's surveying some of the food under the heat lamps. Well, Sindhoom had a project where they have a person in a certain chamber or hooked up with various machinery. And their hopes was that they would look through other people and be able to see what they saw. Isn't, isn't this somebody uh, Carlton hooked us up with? I'm going to have to have a word with him if I ever see him again. Would the person be kind of floating around in a liquidy stuff in a black suit with goggles on? I mean, however they, however they did it. But fortunately, they did not get a hold of that... Uh, statue what happened yeah. to that anyway <laughs> oh i'm sure the uh i'm sure the planet cushioned the fall and why was i on top of the statue like a giant me on the statue thing and what were the arm things oh i thought we explained this before but i, I don't understand why would I have been suddenly on top of the statue. Well, it gets complicated. Let's say that other you made poor choices at one time. No, my love life is complicated. This is insane. <laughs> my phone is complicated. This is insane. But that statue has strange effects that even, even I don't understand. It was left over, but it's believed to be left over from the originators of the world, like during its creation. Which world? All of it. Corvald? <laughs> Do you remember this, Corvald? Were you there? <laughs> you have a love life? Oh, my head hurts too much right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm it, very confused. <laughs> how do you know this is from the, uh, the beginning of, of all things? Because there's various ones throughout the sector and they've been here a very long time and there's been research done to them. 
Do they all have an anime on top of them? I don't think so. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> and what did you mean, other her? Do I have a sister? Oh, uh, in a manner of speaking, yes. I mean, if if there were two animes, I'm pretty sure the universe would collapse. Wait, a minute. Am I a clone? <laughs> uh, can I send myself out to get lunch and not have to do chores because another me will do chores? No, it doesn't work that way. What use is a clone if you can't do that? Yeah, exactly. So, was that you we saw in the hot leopard bikini? Yes, that was a uh, younger me. So, like, a long time ago then? Yeah, it's, you know, I was on the set of uh, The Lioness of Lusty Lagoon. Yeah, yeah, Corvald said you were too young for him back then. Ara, Ara, fight the actress, weren't you? Oh, it's, it was one of my lesser roles that uh, I feel I shouldn't have done it at the time, but, uh, you know. Based on how you were dressed, I would definitely say it was not one of your lesser roles. Oh, I get it. That's a joke. The inhabitants were definitely not from that, uh, that time period. Or those metal swarming things. Yeah, there's almost this cross between current, well, presumably current. I can't really tell anymore. And oh, we're, yes, we're we're in the current. This ancient, uh, this ancient syndrome time. Yes, <laughs> it's it's basically what your mind, what Niles is projecting in your mind, and what your mind sees. So apparently one of you was thinking about the lioness of Lusty Lagoon, and that's how I showed up as she looks at the three of you. Don't look at me. I've never seen it. I'm a fan of all your works. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened to the planet in the Grist system? Is it still all messed up? Which one? Wait, how many planets are in that system with inhabitants on it? I thought that was only Fatma. It's still the same as it was, as far as I know. You mean Agraria and the Sky City? Well, we still have to find some way to deal with Sky City and free the Agrarians. What happened if Sky City fell? It would probably kill most of the Agrarians. That's not an ideal. What would happen if Sky City were to raise into orbit? I don't know. That's a very good question. Into mm -hmm. orbit probably wouldn't affect much. They would probably have to go above orbit and leave. Well, if we could get them above orbit and fly them into the sun or something. Ooh, kill them with fire. I like it. I think it's our best option, honestly. All we have to do is somehow take control of whatever they're using to keep it levitating above everyone and then boost its power output. Pour a little whiskey in the gas tank. Oh, or some nitrous if we can find it. F-350, do you remember? F-3? Never He's mind. back on Ermac. Oh, good. <sighs> Wait, Your ship is secure. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Hmm. Corvo, do you think you could do some research into how a yeet a, to yeet a city into space? I can think about it. Um... But more importantly, and Corval pulls out his Gladius and puts it on the table. This thing has a time skip. Yes. Yeah, I, I suspected your Gladius was compromised. That's not a reputation I want going around. <laughs> Corval, where have you been sticking that Gladius? In whatever uh, enemy I can find. <laughs> uh, tell me, Rose, uh, how do I cure this? Cream. <laughs> <laughs> well. Is there anything you can do? 
It's all up to you, Corvald. You must grip it firmly and become the master of it. <laughs> so I just have to swing harder, you're saying? <laughs> Keep your hand tight and your knuckles white. <laughs> Spend some alone time with it. I'm sure that uh, I know there's a few things that uh, Charlie can show you. <laughs> I didn't realize Charlie was uh, a wielder of the Gladius as well. Oh, he knows a few tricks. Well, I will book a session. <laughs> I, his first available. Because I can't have, I can't have uh, making contact with every every single thing uh, shooting me back, potentially uh, in undoing our hard work. Can't. I mean, sure, it could be useful, but but well, it could at least control it. Can't have your gladius just popping off all willy nilly. Right. <laughs> Not keep it chomp. You can't have a limp gladius. She's like, you still have the glazer, right? Corval will check. Still in your pocket. I do. Rub it all over your gladius. No, do not. <laughs> good. It's good that they did not get a hold of this either. What are they going to do with it? Whatever. Whatever. Various things Sindum can think of. Now that they're out of it's power, they want back in. We're gonna we're gonna find this Niles guy and cut his head off. Did you ever locate him? Well, not yet. Saw him in the, what looked like a building floating in fluid, and then the self destruct went off, and we were here. And he said, "See you soon." Maybe we can offer to sell him the Glazerite and then, you know, backstab him in the throat. Well, if he can control time, he'd be able to go ahead and tell that, mm. you know, we're about to backstab him so he can avoid being backstabbed. That's a good point. I don't think he can manipulate time too much. Well, he can do something. With the Glazerite, he sure would be able to. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should throw this stuff into a sun and see if that gets rid of it. I don't think that'd fast. be a terrible idea. Then he'd never be able to get it. <laughs> I think the sun would go supernate and go the whole galaxy. <laughs> what does Niles like? What does he care about? Credits. I'm sure what every Sindhum officer or wanted glory and power and you just saw an opportunity. I wonder if there's something we can offer him that will make him think that he'll get glory and power. I don't know. I have a feeling you're not going to have to go too far to find him. Well, I'm sure he'll try and find us. We do have something he wants. Provost Gladius? No. Oh. It's got the glass right. Oh, yeah. It will be after us. Nobody wants Corvald's Gladius till he gets it working right again. I don't know. He's probably learned his lesson. He probably won't be coming after you. So he I would... did say see you soon, though. Yeah, so I'm assuming he, you will probably end up seeing him. There was that man we were with. Uh, Taylor was his name, I believe. With the enchanting tower. Oh, yes. He is on Ormac as well. I think as long as we get our ship, we should be able to go ahead and get tracked by down by him easy enough. <laughs> Just don't let Corval drop it anymore. That was <laughs> sketchy. Oh, he did fine. <laughs> not wanted to be in, but it was what we needed at the time. I have a thing, feeling things are about to get a lot rougher. What? I need a vacation. I doubt we're getting one of those anytime soon. 
well, things are about to get as hard as I expect them to, and if we're about to get into the thick of it, Corvald, you better get your bladdiest working. I will do my best. Good, I'm going to need you to see this to its inevitable climax with me. I can do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, though. I, I'm, I don't mind Charlie's so. help. I'm, I'm talking about going ahead and defeating the people on Drist on Fatma and saving everyone there and destroying Niles. We were talking about my Gladius. Don't try to hide behind your words. No, your Gladius is going to be necessary. It seems to be the most powerful weapon in the galaxy at the moment. Well, I don't know if that's true, but... Uh, with Charlie and Rose's help, we can make it that way. Maybe Taylor would be able to help. He is he a hacker. Yes, he might be able to help you. Maybe he can hack time. Oh, man. Did you guys see this? They got meatloaf. Oh. Meatloaf. Right <laughs> do you do anything for love except that? <laughs> I hope they have prune juice, too. <laughs> Good luck finding any juice. Paul's already been to the bar twice. Oh, no. <laughs> His manager right there scolding him the whole way. Well, you've got Paul and, and the man and uh, <clears throat> his tour manager. And Mel. And Mel and Duncan, if you wish, can use them. And Taylor. It sounds to me like we got a crew for our ship. I agree, we should probably get some rest. Yep, yeah, let's go beg the captain to take us to Ermac and then get some sleep. I agree with that. There should be some place to rest on this ship. Yeah. Like yeah, the guest there's, quarters. <laughs> yeah, there's a, yeah, a guest quarters that you can all relax in. Uh, Rose tells you that um, not to worry too much about the time issues because, you know, uh, Niles's attempt was, though it was, uh, he came close, it probably took a lot out of him to make that happen. And uh, at a great risk to him. Statue has me worried. <laughs> Keeps appearing and it's time-based. That, that thing's seriously buried by now. It's only been a hundred years. It just went to the core of the planet. Anyone could get it. So, yeah, it's a good place to uh, <laughs> to stop as Corvald has fallen asleep <laughs> with his gladius. In his hand. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Peter. Uh, all right, thank yeah. you, guys. I'm going to go crash. See y'all. All right, take it easy. <laughs>